Apollo 10 was a human spaceflight, the fourth crewed mission in the United States Apollo program, and the second to orbit the moon. NASA described it as a dress rehearsal for the first moon landing and designated it an F mission intended to test all spacecraft components and procedures short of actual descent and landing. While astronaut John Young remained in the command and service module orbiting the moon, astronauts Thomas Stafford and Gene Cernan flew the Apollo lunar module to within 15.6 kilometers of the lunar surface, the point at which powered descent for landing would begin on a landing mission, before rejoining Young in the CSM. After orbiting the moon 31 times, Apollo 10 returned safely to Earth. Its success enabled the first crewed landing during Apollo 11 two months later. While NASA had considered attempting the first crewed lunar landing on Apollo 10, mission planners ultimately decided that it would be prudent to have a practice flight to hone the procedures and techniques. The crew encountered some issues during the course of the flight, namely pogo oscillations during the launch phase and a brief, uncontrolled tumble of the LM ascent stage in lunar orbit during its solo flight. However, the major mission objectives were accomplished. Stafford and Cernan observed and photographed Apollo 11's planned landing site in the Sea of Tranquility. Apollo 10 spent approximately 61 hours orbiting the moon, for about 8 of which Stafford and Cernan flew the LM apart from Young in the CSM, and about 8 days total in space. Apollo 10 set the record for the highest speed attained by a crewed vehicle, 39,897 km per hour on May 26, 1969, during the return from the moon. The mission's call signs were the names of the Peanuts characters Charlie Brown for the CSM and Snoopy for the LM, who became Apollo 10's semi-official mascots. Peanuts creator Charles Schultz also drew mission-related artwork for NASA. By 1967, NASA had planned the steps that needed to be taken prior to an attempt to land on the moon. It approved a list of mission types, designated by letters, that needed to be flown prior to a landing attempt, which would be the G mission. The early uncrewed flights were considered A or B missions, while Apollo 7, the crewed flight test of the command and service module, was the C mission. The first crewed orbital test of the lunar module was accomplished on Apollo 9, the D mission. Apollo 8, flown to the moon's orbit without an LM, was considered a C prime mission, but its success gave NASA the confidence to skip the E mission, which was planned to be testing of the full Apollo spacecraft in medium or high Earth orbit. Apollo 10, the dress rehearsal for the lunar landing, was to be the F mission. NASA considered skipping the F mission as well and attempting the first lunar landing on Apollo 10. Some with the agency advocated this, feeling it senseless to bring astronauts so close to the lunar surface, only to turn away. Although the lunar module intended for Apollo 10 was too heavy to perform the lunar mission, the one intended for Apollo 11 could be substituted by delaying Apollo 10 a month from its May 1969 planned launch. NASA official George Muller favored a landing attempt on Apollo 10, he was known for his aggressive approach to moving the Apollo program forward. Director of Flight Operations Christopher C. Kraft and others opposed this, feeling that new procedures would have to be developed for a rendezvous in lunar orbit, and that NASA had incomplete information regarding the moon's mass concentrations, which might throw off the spacecraft's trajectory. Lt. Gen. Sam Phillips, the Apollo program manager, listened to the arguments on both sides and decided that having a dress rehearsal was crucial. On November 13, 1968, NASA announced who the crew of Apollo 10 would be. Selected as one of the second group of astronauts in 1962, he flew as pilot of Gemini 6A and command pilot of Gemini 9A. John Young, the command module pilot, was 38 years old and a commander in the Navy at the time of Apollo 10. A 1952 graduate of Georgia Tech who entered the Navy after graduation and became a test pilot in 1959, he was selected as a Group 2 astronaut alongside Stafford. Young thereafter commanded Gemini 10, flying with Michael Collins. Eugene Cernan, the lunar module pilot, was a 35-year-old commander in the Navy at the time of Apollo 10. Selected as one of the third group of astronauts in 1963, Cernan flew with Stafford on Gemini 9A before his assignment to Apollo 10. With five prior flights among them, Apollo 10 had the most experienced American crew to reach space prior to the Space Shuttle era, and the first American space mission to have a crew consisting entirely of spaceflight veterans. Which became Apollo 7, flown by Shearer's crew. The backup crew for Apollo 10 was L. Gordon Cooper as commander, Don F. Eisel as command module pilot and Edgar Mitchell as lunar module pilot. By the normal rotation of crews during Apollo, Cooper, Eisel and Mitchell would have flown on Apollo 13, but Cooper and Izell never flew again. Dickie Slayton, director of flight crew operations, felt that Cooper did not train as hard as he could have, 
while taking risks such as auto racing. Izel was blackballed because of incidents during Apollo 7, which he had flown as CMP and which had seen conflict between the crew and ground controllers, he had also been involved in a messy divorce. Mitchell escaped the fate of his crewmates, was assigned to the crew slated to fly Apollo 13, and when that crew was switched to Apollo 14 to give the mission commander, Alan Shepard more time to train, flew that mission as LMP, and walked on the moon. For projects Mercury and Gemini, a prime and a backup crew had been designated, but for Apollo, a third group of astronauts, known as the support crew, was also designated. Slayton created the support crews early in the Apollo program on the advice of McDivitt, who would lead Apollo 9. McDivitt believed that, with preparation going on in facilities across the US, meetings that needed a member of the flight crew would be missed. Support crew members were to assist as directed by the mission commander. Usually low in seniority, they assembled the mission's rules, flight plan, and checklists, and kept them updated. Flight directors during Apollo had a one-sentence job description, the flight director may take any actions necessary for crew safety and mission success. CAPCOMs were Duke, Engel, Jack Luzma and Bruce McCandless too. The command module was given the call sign, Charlie Brown, and the lunar module the call sign, Snoopy. These were taken from the characters in the comic strip, Peanuts, Charlie Brown and Snoopy. The choice of names was deemed undignified by some at NASA, as was the choice for Apollo 9 CM and LM. Public relations chief Julian Shear urged a change for the lunar landing mission. For Apollo 10, according to Cernan, the PR types lost this one big time, for everybody on the planet knew the klutzy kid and his adventuresome beagle, and the names were embraced in a public relations bonanza. Apollo 11's call signs were Columbia, for the command module and Eagle, for the lunar module. Snoopy, Charlie Brown's dog, was chosen for the call sign of the lunar module since it was to snoop around the landing site, with Charlie Brown given to the command module as Snoopy's companion. Snoopy had been associated for some time with the space program, with workers who performed in an outstanding manner awarded silver, Snoopy pins, and Snoopy posters were seen at NASA facilities, with the cartoon dog having traded in his World War I aviator's headgear for a space helmet. The use of the dog was also appropriate since in the comic strip, Snoopy had journeyed to the moon the year before, thus defeating, according to Schultz, the Americans, the Russians, and that stupid cat next door. The shield-shaped mission insignia shows a large, three-dimensional Roman numeral X sitting on the moon's surface, in Stafford's words, to show that we had left our mark. Although it did not land on the moon, the prominence of the number represents the significant contributions the mission made to the Apollo program. A CSM circles the moon as an LM ascent stage flies up from its low pass over the lunar surface with its engine firing. On the mission patch, a wide, light blue border carries the word Apollo at the top and the crew names around the bottom. Apollo 10, the F mission or dress rehearsal for the lunar landing, had as its primary objectives to demonstrate crew, space vehicle and mission support facilities performance during a crewed mission to lunar orbit, and to evaluate the performance of the lunar module there. It was to attempt photography of Apollo landing site 2 in the Sea of Tranquility, the contemplated landing site for Apollo 11.